All right, hi everyone, and welcome to a very quick foundation tutorial for those of you that are just now getting into the game. I'm gonna go over the basic beginner steps to get a village that's self-sufficient. That includes trading to get tools, which you don't produce early in the game, and creating everything you need to get to that point. All right, so let's start with a new game. Leave the balancing at default. The hills map and the coastal map are equivalent for the purpose of this tutorial because you don't need to build a bridge to get the traders and the villagers to work. So I'm going to go ahead and pick coastal because it's a better looking map in my opinion. So let's start the game. Alright, so when you're in here, you see that you have these areas in white. And the reason that these are in white is because these are good starting zones. They're the only ones you can pick. They have both stone and berries. There's berries right there. I am going to start on this one, just a personal preference right here. Uh, it's got both stones and berries, so you click to buy it. And then the first quest you have is to build a village center. It's not really a quest because if you don't do it, you're not going anywhere. I'm going to drop the village center pretty close to right in between the, the berries and the stones. So as soon as you do that, you have your people and uh, you get your initial buildings unlocked, you get an extraction zone, and now your new quest is to reach a weekly profit of 500. So let's just go through the extraction zone first. I'm not going to show forbidden land in this. Forbidden land just simply means that your villagers are not allowed to travel over it. We're going to do extraction. So the way that the zones work, the extraction zones, are anything that needs to be extracted has to be in an extraction zone. So berries have to be in an extraction zone. Stones have to be in an extraction zone. And then I like to cut down just the pines because you can reforest with pines, but you can't reforest with oak. You can hold the control key and you can make the cursor or the selection area bigger. We'll turn this off. So I'm just gonna build down in order here. First thing I'm going to build is a lumber camp because we need lumber. So we'll just plop a lumber camp in right here. We need a builder. So let's just target the first victim and make Gwyneth a builder. And she is going to come here and build the lumber camp. The lumber camp only requires five tools. So first thing she had to do was chop down any trees that were in the way, which she did. And now she's going to go to the initial store and get five tools. So let's look at that. I'd like to bring up this window and put it over here. Personal preference. We have 20 tools to start out with. She has five of them. We have 40 wood. 400. We, we started out with 500 gold. And we have 10 berries and 10 cloth. Um, so the next thing we want to build is a gathering hut because we need berries. So we'll put the gathering hut near the berries. And I'm going to assign Mr. Mohawk here as another builder so we can build two buildings at once. So let's build another building, Stonecutter Camp. We need a Stonecutter Camp to build a well, and a well is critical because we need both a well and a market to jump to the surf level, and we need to jump to the surf level to get residential. So let's put that in right there. And next up is a market. I'm going to jump over here to Monuments. The market uses the Monument interface, which means there's building parts, and then you start construction. We want to make a food market. And yeah, let's scoot that out of the way. I'm going to put the food market right here. Like so. And start construction. And that's going to use five cloth and ten wood. I also need to build a well. Because like I said, we got to have both the market and the well. So we're going to put the well real close to it here, right here. The well requires five stone. We don't have any stone yet until the stonecutter camp gets finished. And uh, I should say that, yeah, stonecutter camp gets finished. And once it does, then we can assign somebody to it. So what do we have built so far? The gathering hut's finished, so I can click on the gathering hut and assign a villager, Rose. You're going to collect berries. This lumber camp is finished. Jock, you're going to cut down wood. And as soon as this camp is finished, and I'm going to speed this up to 2x for this. There we go. We're going to assign Henry 
to the stone cutter camp and then we'll be making stones. So now we've started building the well with the 10 tools, but we need five stones before it can be finished. Right, building complete market. You can clear these by right clicking on them. So on the market, this is very important, because there's multiple things to sell for a food market, early in the game there's only berries. You have to click on here and say, I want to sell berries, and then we'll assign available villager Barbara. So the market is now set up. She's going to grab berries from the gathering hut, and people are going to collect the berries, but we're not happy yet because we got to have our well. Now, this is probably also a good time to point out that every production center, stonecutter camp, gathering hut, a sawmill, anything that produces a product can only hold up to 100 of that product before they stop working, which is why warehouses have been introduced. Okay, the well is finished. The market was already finished. We now have reached surf status and we get our first uh, message from the kingdom. The kingdom is recognizing your efforts in establishing your settlement. I am but your humble servant. This gives us four kingdom influence, that's the swords, and four labor influence, that's the hammer. Remember that, I'll cover this at the very end of the tutorial. So now that we've upgraded to surf status, we have a new residential zone and a lot of people wonder hey how come I can't put a residential zone in well you have to do what I did here with the well in the market before you can upgrade to surf and now they're building houses and this is what's gonna make the villagers happy so if we sort the villager list by happiness uh, we see that uh, Rose for some reason is just as pleased as can be but Henry is not pleased and if we look at his status he's got the berries he's got the water he needs a house. He doesn't have a house. That's the second spot here. So now we're going to need planks. We are going to need planks to be able to unlock a trade route and become self-sufficient. So to get planks, you need a sawmill. And I'm going to put the sawmill right here just because it's very close to the woodcutter camp. And I'm going to go ahead and say, hey, sawmill, Let's make this high priority. Walter's already assigned. But if for some reason they were instead assigned to building houses, we can high prioritize this to force them to build this first. So we're going to need 20 wood and 10 stone. We have one stone and zero wood. So to speed this up, we're obviously short on wood at the moment. I'm going to go ahead and, and assign Helen to the lumber camp so she can cut wood. Our happiness is going up. And now we have two villagers joining. Now, happiness determines how fast villagers join. If the village becomes unhappy, villagers will still occasionally join. However, if a villager is unhappy enough, they'll leave. So it's very important to keep happiness up. You're given a grace period at the beginning of the game, but as the game goes on, this becomes more and more important. And again, you can sort your villager list by happiness and see who's happy and who's not. Uh, Henry's house still hasn't been built. That's this house, because I've been prioritizing the sawmill. So Henry will just have to wait. The sawmill is now done. So let's go ahead and assign George, since he's new. George, you are now our carpenter, and you will create planks. And we have two planks. Our first, ooh, four planks. Our first planks have been created at the sawmill. And planks are important because we'll need planks to build a warehouse. And we'll need planks to open a trade route. If we go over here and we click on trade, to open the initial trade route to Davenport, we've got to give them 20 planks. We also need planks, like I said, to build a warehouse. And you need a warehouse to use trading. Because if you're going to trade with Davenport, the trader has to have a place to place the goods that you buy or to pick up the goods that you want to sell. And that is the warehouse. So I'm going to go ahead and let us get to 20 planks first before I do that. And this is a good time to show the stockpile feature. So I will go ahead and say, right, let's build a warehouse. It takes 15 planks and five stones. So I'm going to build a warehouse and I'm just going to, I'm just going to put it over here for lack of a better place to put it right here. Okay. That's going to steal planks, but I'm going to stockpile the planks, right? I'm going to hit this button. This is going to turn yellow. Basically what this says is nobody can use planks right now. All right, Mary and Henry have arrived. 
And a new zone, reforestation, is now available based on population. And one new building is unlocked. That would be the reforester's hut. If we review our happiness in the villagers list, if we look at the person that's most happy, it's Henry because he just got here. But if we look at Walter, who's been here a while, we say, hey, he's had some water, he's got a house, and he's had some berries. Therefore, he's happy. And if you hover over his happiness, you see he's 75. And it's the average of all those happinesses that make the village a 79 and a big fat smiley face, which means everything's fine. All right, we're at 24 planks. So I'm going to open the trade window. I'm gonna unlock the trade route, which is the 20 planks. Quest complete. You get one free territory with this quest. And then most importantly, I'm gonna turn off the stockpile. They're immediately gone because now we're going to build the warehouse. So now that the warehouse is complete, I'm going to need a villager to collect goods at the warehouse. But it's not critical for what I want to do with trading. So the, I want to buy tools because we don't produce tools yet, but we have to have tools to build. So slot one, I'm going to set for tools. And I don't need to assign a villager yet because what, what the transporters do is that they take items from your producers and bring them to the warehouse. What I do need to do, however, is bring up the trade window again, go over to trading resources. I'm going to find tools. There's no trade. There's buy until inventory reaches value and sell all above the value. For tools, I want to buy and then I can hold down on this to move by five. I'm going to buy 20 tools to keep my tool count at 20 at all times. There they are unemployed. We get Emma and Wildebald. And Wildebald is our transporter. So tools in slot one. Slot two, I'm going to store berries. Now he's already moved the tools from the stockpile to here. Slot three, I'm going to store stone. And slot four, how about planks for now? And we've already got 50 stone. Each slot can only hold 50 of an item. If we look at sales here, and this is why the market's so important, a lot of our money is coming from the sales of berries. So let's look at our budget. The villager consumption was 180 in berries, so that's how much we made on berries. It cost us 62 upkeep, and general spending, that's me building buildings, is 20. This, here's an example of the questing system. My lord, we need to choose who we want to help. Deliver 30 berries to kingdom in 60 days or to the clergy or to labor the people or ignore this quest i'm keeping it all now the reason you would want to do these quests is because it gives you influence and remember when we had that first pop-up and i said remember the numbers we were congratulated for starting our village we got four labor influence and four kingdom influence you get splendor from building things so if you look at the market the berry market gives me plus two labor splendor. That's where I get the two labor splendor. So if you look at this box here, to unlock the Fisher's Hut and the Lord Manor, I need to have a population of 10 serfs and two labor splendor. I get the two splendor from the market and 10 serfs are my population. Let's look at the population. I now have 14, but when the village was upgraded to serf, I only had eight. When the next two immigrated, then I had 10, and that gave me the 10 serfs I need to unlock this. So I can go ahead and unlock these now because I have a total of four labor influence. I'm not going to build these in this tutorial, but that's how you unlock these. All right, let's close all this. So now for this quest, anything that you want to deliver on these quests has to be in a warehouse. So... I'm going to say I'm going to deliver berries to the clergy because I would like some clergy influence. And this quest pops up that says deliver 30 berries to the clergy, 60 days left. I may not be producing enough berries or storing enough berries in the warehouse. Actually, I'm not storing any berries in the warehouse at the moment. So what I can do again to make sure I meet this quest as I can stockpile the berries. Everybody's gonna go hungry for a little bit, but as long as you do this fast, uh, you ought to be able to build up the berries. Now we got two more berries to go, then we'll have 30. 
This X will turn to a green check and I can finish the quest. There it is. I'm off the hook. We delivered 30. I'm going to stop stockpiling the berries so people can eat their food again. I did take a happiness hit because one villager was lacking food. But he'll get food now. It'll be fine. All right, that's the end of this short tutorial. Hopefully you found it helpful. I'm linking here on the end cards to some other foundation series that I've done. If you want to see longer videos. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you later.